Hello and welcome to Muddy Paws Crime Facebook Live. This evening we are with the owner of Benji. Uh, thank you, Amy, for doing the live this evening. Thank you for having me. It's okay. Um, so we're doing these live to raise more awareness and part of our Get Them Home for Christmas campaign. Um, so if you do have any information on Benji, we ask you to please, please come forward. So we're just going to go through some questions with Amy and um, we will then at the end show a presentation which will show some photos and videos of Benji which you can play back at your leisure um, to obviously you know look out for him you may have bought him in good faith um, if you have please come forward so Amy for those that don't know about Benji um, can you let us know his breed and how old he was when he went missing and how old he would be now? So Benji is a Jack Chihuahua, so a Jack Russell Chihuahua. Um, he was six when he went missing. Um, yeah. So he'll be seven, okay. seven now. Okay. So what date and where from did he go missing and what were the circumstances as you know them to be? So Benji went missing on the 23rd of June 2022 last year um, at John Muir Country Beach in Dunbar, Scotland, um, EH42. Um, I was actually on holiday at the time um, and I've, I run a dog walking business um, and my mum works for me. So she was looking after Benji while I was away. Um, we walk at the same beach every single day, twice a day. So he knew the area really, really well. Um, regular faces, regular people, everybody kind of knows us as well. Um, so just really bizarre. Um, my mum kind of messaged me when I was on holiday and just said, Benji's disappeared, he's not kind of come back, which is a, quite unusual for him. Um, him and my mum and dad's dog tend to kind of disappear into the distance and they'll kind of scurry away chasing rabbits and things like that. Um, but this one particular day just didn't come back and Lola, my mum and dad's dog, kind of made an appearance, but Benji didn't. Um, so yeah, we kind of started to panic a little bit after a little bit of time um, when he didn't kind of appear back, but obviously we had other dogs to look after. So my dad eventually came down and kind of looked and then, yeah, that's when we kind of started to panic um, and realised that there was something more to it and he hadn't just kind of lost his bearings and kind of lost where we were. And at the time, was there a ground team involved that, you know, checked sort of like, you know, you say about chasing rabbits, um, checked any holes in the area, um, being a beach, did you let the Coast Guards know? Yeah, we. I was pretty quick on it. Um, so obviously my mum and dad are not great with social media and things, but I was kind of working on holidays, organising everything. I was speaking to um, Hazel at Muzzle Mutt's um who works with scent dogs and things so she was on the case and um, we were speaking to drone sar who had drones and everything obviously i was posting things on my social media page on my personal and my business page and um, we got in touch with police and um, coast guards everything really and um, so we had a couple of scent dogs down we had drones down that night and um, so yeah we were kind of quite quick on the mark to try and make sure we had you know everybody down looking for him with posters and things like that so everything was covered that could be really and okay. did scent dogs or anything pick in you know or the drones pick anything up at all drone wise no um unfortunately nothing with drones typically because because we walk there every day twice a day unfortunately the scent dogs were really struggling to pick up a new scent because scents can last weeks um so unfortunately the two scent dogs that we did have down were kind of just leading us in a loophole continuously which was the same loop that we walk pretty much every single day and um, occasionally thor did kind of take us off in different distances and different directions and things and we did follow him but it just led us to nothing and um, so we did set up um like little scent areas i would take uh, my mum took some of my clothing down we had ring doorbells set up for at night we were obviously searching through the night because it was quiet. Um, we had a woman called Tess come in who was amazing and she had technology I didn't even know existed. So we had microphones and cameras, heat detectors all down the holes. 
um, like the microphones that she was putting down the holes were trying to listen for heartbeats and breathing and things like that. Um, obviously, it's a needle in a haystack with the amount of holes that were down this beach, but we we really did cover a lot of area. Um, and I wasn't really willing to give up until we had been down every single hole, to be honest. But he was he was very small, Benji. He was a really, really small dog, and he was kind of the size of a small cat. But I'm not entirely sure if he would have gone down a hole. And they always they kept kind of reassuring me that he would eventually get out because all the holes that we were looking down, they were quite big. Um, and he was similar size to a rabbit hair, you know, sort of thing. So they did think he'd be able to manoeuvre his way out if he lost a bit of weight and things. So we kind of avoided the thinking that he was maybe down a hole. And that was why we did kind of then go on to thinking he had been lifted and maybe stolen. And was there any, I mean, obviously that kind of area probably doesn't have uh, much CCTV or cameras, but was there any sort of in car parks or anywhere like that nearby? that we checked. Yeah, unfortunately we're really lucky in the fact that we are quite well known at that beach with walking there every single day so we spoke to park attendants and stuff um, and they kept an eye they did say um, you know it was typically school holidays at the time for us in Scotland and it was really really busy um, so the car park was busier than normal um, mm -hmm. but no unfortunately no CCTV we did contact, there's a few houses at the end of the road that we did ask if they had ring doorbells but unfortunately they didn't um, and nobody really saw anything suspicious. He is such a small dog that you could lift him, you could carry him, you could put him in a bag if need be. He's not noisy, so or not in that situation, he's not. So, yeah, just he was very easy to lift if need be. Um, and he's not, you know, if somebody was carrying a lab, you'd kind of give them a bit of a bizarre look to be carrying a Labrador. But for Benji, they maybe just thought, oh, he's tired or his wee legs, you know, he's struggling. So, Nobody that day probably would have looked and thought it was a bizarre thing to see somebody maybe carrying a dog. Yeah, and obviously you say that many people know you in the area, but it's important that you say it was a very busy time being the holidays. So you are going to have visitors that don't know you, don't know Benji. Um, so, yeah, we can see the connection where they may have thought that he was either a stray or, you know, had actually been stolen um yeah unfortunately we still don't know um which is why we're you know doing this live appeal um benji's microchipped and neutered um are you keeping a check on the microchip you know that we always tell you to <laughs> <laughs> yeah you drill it into us <laughs> yeah no we i do check regularly and obviously i get notifications if anything if he is flagged up and um yeah so i do i do regularly check and make sure it's all up to date and everything because i have actually since moved since losing benji i've moved so i made sure that it was all my new address was all up to date and stuff lovely okay and does benji have any distinctive markings or anything distinctive about him that people need to look out for um we hate to say this but even in a recent case that we've just been dealing with microchips can be removed can be replaced so if you have bought benji please look out for anything distinctive about him and come forward and you know, I know obviously that he is pretty distinctive, but you will see in the video that we play as well. Just please, please look out for features. But I'll let you explain, Amy. Yeah, he's he's brindle, brindle and white. Um, a lot of people always point out to me that he's got a kind of love heart shape at the back of his tail. It kind of goes into a love heart. And um, Benji did knock three, four teeth out um, a couple of years ago. So it's very distinctive. His front teeth are missing. Um, so that's kind of my go-to is he does stand out because of that. Um, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Okay. And um, this is your time. If the thief or whoever has Benji now is watching, watches the live, you know, as we share it around, what would you like to say to them to appeal from you? Well, this was the bit I was dreading because I knew I'd get upset with this bit, but you know, I just, Benji was more than just a dog. And I've had a few people, you know, say to me all the time, oh, he's just a dog, but no one will never understand, you know, only people that have dogs can understand what a dog actually means to you. And they are like your children. And Benji was the most important part of my life. He was my best friend and we shared so many memories and he was my little companion at work. You know, he came to work with me every single day and 
he had a really really nice life and I just hope that whoever has him would do the right thing and maybe they think they are by keeping him but he has a loving home and we all miss him so so much and yeah we'd do anything to kind of have him back and as hard as it is because they've probably got attached to him and fallen in love with his little twerks and things and but you know he's my dog and I'd, I'd do anything to have him back and he'll want to be home with you I mean we've seen plenty of photos and videos of you both and you can see the closeness you know in those so what I'm going to do I'm going to take this opportunity um to show the presentation video now uh, but well done. I know that's hard for you to, you know, do that appeal there, Amy. But also, you know, we want to catch the hearts of people that have information about Benji. Uh, please, please come forward. So if you can bear with me. It's a Facebook group. If you haven't joined already, can you please join, invite to, and share? I know it's always very hard to watch those presentations. I get very upset putting them together, but they're so important because people can, you know, the groups are wonderful, but, you know, for people having to keep scrolling through, uh, but, you know, they can watch that just over a minute video pause look at distinctive markings um you know have a think back has a friend a neighbor family member work colleague acquired a dog such as benji you know since he went missing um please don't be afraid to get in touch don't be worrying about the police benji just needs to be home um so before we go amy is there anything else that you would like to add I'd just like to thank everyone for, you know, their amazing messages and continued support and shares. And yeah, it doesn't go unnoticed. It really, really is appreciated. And everybody, you know, that's helped look for Benji and continues to help look for Benji. Um, you know, there's some days, especially Christmas and stuff, it is a really tough time. And yeah, you guys have just, everybody at Muddy Paws has just been amazing as well. Honestly, you guys, I couldn't have done it without any of you. These are just an amazing support for not just me, everybody that's lost the dog, sadly. But yeah, no, honestly, I really appreciate everything. Thank you. And if you do have any information, uh, please come forward to Muddy Paws Crime or contact any of the admin on the group, or you can contact me direct if you want to speak on a one-to-one. -one. Um, I'm just gonna show the video one more time.
As I say, we'll put the video into the comments. Um, it will also be on Benji's group after the live and on the Muddy Paws crime page. Um, so thank you, Amy, for doing the live. We know how you know hard it has been for you, and we are there to support you all the way through. Um, and again, you know, I can't stress enough. If you have any information about Benji, please come forward. Don't be afraid. Just need Benji home. OK, well, thanks very much, everyone. Um, I'll be back on Friday with Wendy speaking on behalf of the owner of the missing dog, Tally. Thank you. Thanks.